Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV here at the factory of Cellular and Bellet, actually in the woods behind it where they've got a fancy little machine gun range and that's the buzzing noise you hear in the background letting people know that we're about to go hot with this, the Negev. I'm here with my buddy Miroslav. Miroslav, talk to me about this machine gun. How do I load it? How do I shoot it? What do I need to know? Guys, I'm with Tom, my buddy from IWI. He's an expert with the Negev. Tom, tell me everything about it. This machine gun is a beautiful piece of uh, engineering. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, the Israelis uh, really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at it. It's gas-operated, obviously, long-stroke gas piston like most are. The Negev is one of three weapons, in, uh, historically, that I'm aware of, that has a unique feature insofar as that it's got safe semi-auto, which rarely you see in belt feds, but I think should be on every one of them. I think SIG's actually caught up to that with some of their newer systems now. Uh, that's not something that had been done typically. It was either safe and having a good time, and that was all, right? <laughs> so in this case, you got safe, semi, and then full auto. As a typical machine guns uh, of the modern warfare or the modern battlefields, uh, it is needed uh, the barrel to be changeable. You know, mm -hmm. you shoot uh, like 200 rounds and then you have another barrel that uh, you can swap for it. Right. So this one has a beautiful, beautiful mechanism to do it. Lift up the cover of, uh, of the brie and that's oh, it. Oh wow, that's it. Take that's a look. it. That it seems too easy. It should, yeah. I'd be worried it would, it would come off by accident. So when you want to change the barrel on the weapon, Typically, if you're firing a sustained rate of about 250 rounds, you want to swap barrels. Uh, and there's different length barrels for it. This is a 13-inch barrel. To, you cannot remove the barrel when the feed tray cover is closed. You have to lift the feed tray cover, and then you can pop the barrel off. And now that was for to make sure that Joe Infantry guy, when he was super tired, in the middle of nowhere, remembered, oh, yeah, i got to clear the weapon before I do a barrel change. So you can remove that feature, but it was intentionally put in there. Brilliant feature, and it still takes about two seconds. It takes no time at all to remove the belt and do that. So it makes sense. You'll notice that the feed tray cover is super short. So normally, if you're familiar, if you out there in uh, TFB land are familiar with belt feds, they normally have this really long feed tray. The cover. M60. It's like it, a skateboard. The M60, the 240, the, the saw, they all have that. That's taken from a German MG42, MG34 design. And the idea with that, there was a cam track in there. And what that did was it governed these pawls that went back and forth to load the belt. The Israelis didn't do it that way. What they did was the actual cam is part of the pawls itself and how it feeds is based off the bolt carrier. So there's less parts, it's a simpler system, and you can have this super short feed tray. The advantage of that is because the sight is not attached to the feed tray, when you're opening and closing it, you're not slamming the sights. You're, you're kind of taking care of the optic, which is a good thing, right? So it's smart design, right? Um, super short, does a really good job. How to, how to load it before we can shoot? First thing, you need to cock it back. Then you will lift this part and put the belt here in like this you know so it, it's a, in, in front or in the same uh, axis of the barrel right then you will close it and here you go you're ready to it's fire. ready to go okay cock it press this button that'll lift the cover off of the feed tray then belt goes in it's ready to go Initial observations, extremely light recoiling like the Mini-Me. I've got to say, um, with the kind of M4 style buttstock that's on here and the iron sights, we're not using an optic, we're just using irons. Like you have to jam your face. Like I had to get my cheek into this effing stock and that was not very comfortable and I still had a hard time even seeing the front sight post with the peep sight. So, I'm gonna go ahead and give those sights like a three out of 10, but the shooting experience overall, incredible. It's just amazingly light recoiling for not really being that heavy of a weapon. So the Negev 5.56 has actually been around for a very long time. It went through a lot of different configurations. The original one for the IDF had only iron sights that were welded on the back. They kept improving the system though. Um, actually putting a Picatinny rail on the back so it could accommodate optics because they were modernizing the system. 
So the Negev 556 is a standard system that they use over there. They were dependent on the saw for a long time and they wanted to develop a belt fed for themselves and that's kind of where the Negev originally came from. So it was only in 556. Um, there's two versions of it. There's one that's the infantry model. It has a stock on it that looks like a foul stock, right? So it's not adjustable. And then this is the SF model. The SF model has the ability to have, you know, variable length to pull on it. Um, the IDF stock has variable comb height too, depending on what optic you were putting on it made sense. And the 556 will fold. You can actually fold the stock and make it super short, which is nice for transporting it or whatever. You don't want to shoot it, you know, with the stock folded per se. The 556 actually has the ability to accommodate a 150 round drum, a 200 round drum, and a magazine. Now, the saw had one notorious issue, and I'm very familiar with the saw, trained on it, taught on it. Um, and that was that when you fed a magazine into it, uh, it didn't feed reliably. And the reason it was is normally a belt fed is going to feed off a link. So there's a lot of friction there when it's pulling it off the steel link and loading it into the weapon. When you feed a magazine in, it's not dealing with that friction anymore. So the bolt starts to go really quick. And uh, if it was an older magazine, the rounds wouldn't catch up, and that's when you had a malfunction. You had to clear it out. So the Negev, they knew about that. What they did was their gas regulator is three position. So that's regular, that's adverse, and then when you feed magazines into it, you take a bullet, you stick it in there, and you turn it all the way down. It slows the bolt down so you can feed mags reliably no out of it. Oh shit. Yeah. I had no clue. That's really cool. That's why they did that, yeah. And this whole thing, it actually comes apart really easy for cleaning, too. The 308 came out later on. This is like a 2000, uh, 2012 design. Uh, the belt that comes on this, obviously that's a 308, 762, uh, 51. It runs a 120 round drum. This doesn't feed off magazines. This is a lightweight, so there are very few of these made. This is like the only one in the country that I know of currently. Um, normally the weapon, the 308 version, is about two pounds heavier than the 556. About the same size, it's actually pretty cool. Um, the difference with this one is they were trying to get the weight down. The reason this is unique, for a couple reasons, is the barrel, you notice there's no carrying handle on it. It's thinner too, so they're trying to cut down the weight. So the guys that are operating with this aren't carrying a spare barrel, probably an SF unit. If they have a contact, they're just going to deal with the contact. It'll tear the barrel up a little quicker. That's the reason you do quick change barrels is it keeps the barrel alive for a longer time. Um, but the 308 basically operates the same exact way. Uh, as the short one. So if I go from 5.56 five, and I grab this, manual of arms is going to be exactly the same. This has a cyclic rate of about 600 rounds per minute. It's really slow. Shoot it from the shoulder, no problem. Still has the semi-auto feature doesn't have the magazine uh, feature on the gas regulator. It just has it regular need it. and adverse. It doesn't need it. We're not feeding for magazines. Um, when you do, do go to adverse, the one thing you do is you typically fire about 20 to 30 rounds in adverse to blow the carbon out, and then you go back to regular again because it does tear the gun up a little bit. So you, you only want to do that in dire situations. You want to leave it alone. The other thing that both Negevs do that's kind of cool is you'll notice that on the feed tray covers, they have these doors everywhere. And what they're trying to do, just like an M16 or anything else, they're trying to seal the system. Sure. The idea is keep dirt out of it as much as possible. Of course. As soon as the bolt comes forward, kicks it open, the gun's run it. And uh, it's pretty awesome to shoot, I'm not going to lie. Um, it has features like an angry stick, that's what I call it, vertical <laughs> foregrip. But you notice that it comes down at an angle. And right. it can be changed from this side to this side. You can pull the entire thing off if you want to. If you don't need it, you don't need it. And then they made a bipod that was crazy strong. So um, one of the things about bipods on belt feds, if they're stamped metal and you drop to the ground with them real quick when they're extended, they have a tendency to bend and break. So they knew that and they wanted that to be just as rugged as possible because you got a bunch of conscripts out there running around, right. jamming them into rocks and the glow on heights or whatever. So they had to do that. This stock does not fold on the uh, 762 by 51 there's an endine buffer in here. That's why it's 600 rounds per minute and very pleasant to shoot. Um, so because the endine buffer goes into the stock, you can't fold it. But still, awesome weapon system and not that heavy. I mean, for a 308, a typical 240, which is what I'm real familiar with, was a 27 pound machine gun. These are coming in at 18 pounds, you know, with nothing on it. So it's not bad. I mean, lugging it around still, you know, it's 18 pounds, but better than 27. The other thing, and the bolt's not in this one because we're at SHOT Show, but 
Um, the Uzi had it and they took that same technology and they put it into this weapon. It's got a ratcheting system that doesn't allow the bolt to come forward, all right, unless it's all the way at the rear, meaning in the sear itself. What I mean by that is with an open bolt system, if you're pulling back and at some point in time you slip, your hand lets go, if that bolt comes forward and strips a round off, it's going to fire because as soon as it closes, it's gone. Right. Well, they put a ratcheting system in here that you have to, if you let go of it, it catches it. It won't let that weapon fire. Oh, cool. You have to get it all the way to the rear, shove it all the way forward, and then the weapon's ready to go. So that was something that was in the Uzi B, the, the original Uzi, and then uh, they put it in the Negev. So it's actually a, a pretty slick system. Talking machine guns with a machine of a man. Tom, <laughs> you are an encyclopedia, my brother. Thank you so much. Man, it's an honor having you on the program Absolutely. to give everyone out there the rundown on the Negev. Appreciate Thank it, you man. so much. Absolutely.